and happy Monday everybody. Welcome to Well in the Wilderness. I am Anna. And I'm Paul. Hope you've had a good day and managed to get out into the sunshine, in whatever form that may be. Bike ride or stroll in the park or sitting in the garden or even just outside your house. <laughs> Hope you've uh, hope you've managed to enjoy the weather. It looks like it's getting even better this week, which I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> um, today we're going to be talking about who is your guide. So um, you might have been uh, in situations where you've tried to map read <laughs> or follow Google, and your Google Maps has gone down. Uh, I know that I've been in plenty of situations where I've tried to map read and uh, it's gone horribly wrong. Um, I remember times when I've been out with my mum and dad on um, suggested like, walks that are supposed to end up at pubs and we've ended up in the middle of a field and I have not really <laughs> been sure what to do and we've had to end up asking people for help. Um, and, and maybe like an hour later on what should have been a three mile walk, end up in about a 10 mile walk. We ended up back at the pub, thankfully. <laughs> um, so we think about who is your guide. So we're going to read in a minute from uh, Acts 15. And it's clear there that their guide is the Holy Spirit. And as Christians, we all have the Holy Spirit with us. And he guides us with our decisions and in our lives. And we're going to see in Acts 15 in the early church how much they rely on the Holy Spirit as their guide. So Paul's going to read from verse is it 22? 22. 22 to the end of the chapter. Then the apostles and elders with the whole church decided to choose some of their own men and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas, called Barsabas, and Silas, who were leaders among the believers. With them they sent the following letter. The apostles and elders, your brothers, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria and Sicilia. Greetings. We have heard that some went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we are writing. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. Farewell. So they were sent off and went down to Antioch, where they gathered the church together and delivered the letter. The people read it and were glad for its encouraging message. Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the believers. After spending some time there, they were sent off by the believers with a blessing of peace to return to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, where they and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord. Some time later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. Thanks, Paul. Um, so in that passage, we read uh, the phrase, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is directly speaking to them. Um, it was clear, it's one of the times that uh, it's clear evidence of the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, not just that he was there, um, kind of the presence of him, but he was really involved in the decisions that they were making, almost like he was sat there and was part of the council. And they um, kind of, it was like he was an, an, one of the extra men round the table. Um, and they treat him as one who unites them uh, so they could come to a joint conclusion. So it's obvious that they had the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God was living and breathing and active in their lives. So how can the Holy Spirit guide us? How can we make sure 
that the Holy Spirit is our guide. Well, I, be I believe that um, prayer is key in this and reading the Bible and really getting to know God's word uh, so that our decisions can be united with his. And as we reflect, um, especially over the next few weeks um, on maybe decisions that we're making or how we're living our life, are we living in step with the Holy Spirit? Are we making um, decisions and living our days thinking um, with God in mind and uh, maybe remembering to start the day and end the day in prayer to uh, uh, kind of prioritise the time that we're spending with God our Father. So um, yeah, so who is your guide? The question today. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for thanks for watching tonight and um, thanks for tuning in, taking this time out of your day. We really appreciate it and hope to see you again tomorrow. So God bless you. Bye, guys. God bless see you. you. Bye.